you may have been following the entire series of these uh, common slide facilitator moves. If not, go back and watch the last four. They've been, I think, very helpful. Um, and each of the resources linked in each are unique. So you can grab, you know, your discussions and all the things. But for this video, what I would like to do is take you behind the scenes of how I create them because they actually don't take too long to create. And I used to create them in Google Slides, which is great. Cool. Many of them are just like, you know, text and something in a Google slide. Awesome. I think you can do it that way. And I've also learned that really helpful visuals, particularly when you're working with a complex facilitator move or a protocol that has multiple steps, it can be really helpful to have a nice visual for each step that kind of represents what's happening. So I'm going to take you behind the scenes of the tool that I use, which is Canva and how I bring those over into Google slides. I think there are ways to do this even faster. So if you have a better way and you can actually just use your slides and you use your presentations in Canva, great. I'm not there yet. So I'm going to tell you if you're still in Google Slides, you don't want to make the transition to Canva. Here is how I grab them. Um, and what I'm thinking, I'll kind of do a think aloud as I'm going through the process of kind of creating these and, and how to look for these graphics. I shared in an earlier video and then I'm like, I'm going to change this. So criticality, I, I adapted Dr. Goldie Muhammad's questions. They're here. What I think I'm going to do here is actually, I'm just going to take you through a full behind the scenes here. Let's do a slide format and let's actually do. So this is how I would think through this. So let's actually change that because that looks weird. I am thinking I want to actually pull these questions out separately. And I'm going to paste them in two boxes. And so the reason I want to do this is because I'm actually wanting to break apart the questions visually. I could do this through color coding, but I think the other way that this might be helpful for students or, you know, honestly, for staff as well, um, I think it could be really powerful to have a little bit of um, a visual of some kind to kind of cue people to think about this. So I'm going to make space for a little bit of a, a visual here. And I want to still make sure this is ADA accessible. So this is like the full walkthrough you're getting with me. All right, so this is 25, and I want to probably make this the same. Let's make this 24 just to give a little more space. We will make this 24, and then I'm going to bring over the title. Okay, so now that I have all of this stuff, I'm going to go ahead, add that here, pull this over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use Canva to... I, what, I, what I did in Canva is I just have this document it's called presentation images and I just have all sorts of presentation images that I have used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a page here and then I'm going to use the elements right here. And so I'm going to go back to the question, think about what kind of thing I want to use here. So I am thinking about the power in equity. So I might start by writing in equity and just share look at the graphics and kind of think through what would it look like to share this and what would what would students you know be thinking about so they may be familiar with kind of something like this um where if students are kind of standing at the different pieces so i might use i might use that that might be interesting um if i did want to use this i definitely would make sure that the background is ada accessible so i'm actually going to just make this white so that it contrasts nicely with the back okay so maybe this um now i want to go back to elements here for a second the only thing that i have not been able to figure out is that yes you can go to recent but it actually doesn't share the one it doesn't take you right back to where you were um the other one i was thinking was maybe something like this so this idea of kind of like justice and and the um, balance here let's see all right so these are some options that i have i could use either one of these um, I, I generally try to use something super simple that students would be able to look at and think through. So, okay, so that either one could work for that. Now, I also want to think about disrupting oppression. And so I might think about um, like, let's say protest might be like one of the common ways of disrupting oppression might create a visual or a graphic um, where people are like, okay, this is yeah, so I might have like fist in the air, protest, sign. Um, I could use that or I could use the microphone or the mega, I guess it's a megaphone. Um, again, I usually try to use like what is the simplest, but also like what is going to be understood. So I think 
I usually would use something like the megaphone. Now, the thing there is, in my thinking through this through, is that this actually might indicate um, there's only one way, example, voice, um, to share, to descend, or to create, um, identify that there is an injustice. And there's, there's obviously more ways. What I like about this one is that it has multiple signs, so it actually increases the complexity of the visual, which is not usually what I'm going for. But what it does do is it centers collective action against injustice, which historically, traditionally, whatever the word I'm looking for is, like we don't, um, we don't really think about uh, the collective as much as we do like the glorification of an individual leader of a movement, right? And so that's something I want to disrupt. So that's why I'm choosing that one. And then you know what? I'm going to use this idea because I think this also, um, this is a symbol of justice, right? And so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, if I'm using Canva presentations, I can just pull this slide over. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use uh, the co uh, copy or screenshot option. So Command Shift for uh, I believe on a Mac. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to paste it in. Command V. Clearly, that is not what I did. Oh, that's what I did. Sorry. I screenshot it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and upload from my computer. And here's my screenshot. Open that, bring it in here. Okay. I'm going to move some things around. So now we have, I'm going to move this up here. I'm actually going to center this so you can see the whole behind the scenes here. I'm going to make this a different color. Okay. And you know what? Let's center this as well. And I'm just going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this image over. Same idea. I capture that. Bring it over. I think this time I can paste it like that. Okay. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to make the space in between here a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna fine tune here. Now, you get the gist, right? I'm gonna make this a slide that I am going to be able to have students think through consistently, right? Anytime that I want students to be able to use this, I can kind of move it. Um, I'm going to use like a six or something here. There we go. Okay. All right. That's good enough for me at the moment. You can always fine tune it later. And if you're using this slide deck, you can go ahead and take a, make a copy of it. But I think this is a slide that I'm really comfortable using repeatedly with students with maybe a little bit of tweaking. And that's it for me for this video. If you have questions, please feel free to let me know. If you want to grab any of the links in the chat for any of the previous videos, feel free to check those out, grab those, use them, all the, all the good things, all the best to you. And if you have a better way to do this, please feel free to keep doing that better way or let me know. Let me in on the secret of how I can save some more time. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.